Today we're talking about the book The Studio by Jones Kaluda, Winsor Smith and Wrightson, uh, published by Dragon's Dream in... Uh, 79. 79. Um, we're going to take a little uh, look into this book and uh, Eric is going to tell us the story uh, behind it, why he got it, why it's so beautiful, just like him. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, let's get started. I'm just gonna defile it with my fingers. Oh my god. Yes. Yeah. Um, there you go. Well, as a, as a starting out artist, I was, of course, uh, really drawn to the works of Bernie Wrightson and actually more my Kaluda back then. And I saw this book at a friend of mine's house. Uh, he was actually selling books. And he told me that it's impossible to get it anywhere. And we're talking like early 90s. Mm -hmm. pretty much uh i mean back then it was only like maybe 15 years old yeah so as a as an aspiring artist and building my first collection i saw this at a, at a friend's house i was totally blown away and not only by the beautiful artwork because it just has you know a collection of the greatest pieces by by jones kaluda mm -hmm. and wrightson mm -hmm. uh and barry windsor smith but it was impossible to get it. Like I would look at comic book conventions and nobody actually, you know, had a copy of it. Nobody would sell one. So um, I actually offered somebody who had it uh, 300 marks back then, which is like 150 euros today. Uh, so a huge amount of money for a book like that because I just wanted it so bad. Mm -hmm. um, and never forget, I mean, those, those were the days where there was no... Uh, no googling images or, or anything like that if you wanted to research artists you had to go to the library or the bookstore try to get stuff and everything that was out of print was impossible to get mm -hmm. so that was kind of the reason why i started um buying lots of art books because it was the only way to to see the artwork in a in a decent manner mm -hmm. and especially in this one um you just had these these four amazing artists together in one book because they actually had a studio together which they called the studio just kind of a fitting title brilliant um and <laughs> it was as far as i recall in new york they rented a like a loft which was in terrible condition and they just you know renovated it moved in and just you know worked the place and started doing their you know creating their artwork there and they're all spread over you know the comic books industry book cover illustration uh that mm -hmm. kind of thing um and their styles are so individual and yet from a quality perspective they're so close to one another uh it's just it's just a great combination and nothing like that happened ever since there were a few like smaller artist groups that developed in new york uh, especially people that went to uh, pratt university to study illustration and art mm -hmm. there was a couple of artists that emerged from the same kind of time frame but something like you know the studio with Wrights and jones kaluda and smith just never happened again and i kind of like to think that they um they motivated each other there's a a beautiful documentary film on uh jeffrey jones jeffrey catherine jones which is called uh better things i can really recommend that Try to get a hold of that. Mm -hmm. The quality seems really cool. I mean, it's 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 a it's a stitched book and it's soft cover still, um, still uh, very much focused on the art. There's no, um, as far as I can tell, like like overdoing and overplaying uh, the entire design aspect. Um, it's uh, very much framed. Uh, it's very much a, fra a framing for all the artwork. Um, I'm not sure why they took this color here all the time. There must be a really good reason. Ah, oh, this is more of my liking. <laughs> um, you say something like this hasn't happened uh, since then. So the guys were friends before. Yeah, um, and as far as I know. You would say also that they probably uh, worked a big part together and also learned from each other. I yes. guess so, right? I I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Um, I, I did read more into the topic uh, back then. I probably forgot most of it, but it, they were friends as far as I know. They worked together. Um, I know that uh, Jeffrey Catherine Jones worked as a, a teacher at Pratt, uh, 
Pratt University or Pratt College, mm. uh, the art school. Um, and um, th there's one of these things in this whole industry back then, and I still think this exists today. Um, George Pratt told me that once. He said, we always help the competition. So it's not like they're competitors in any way or form. Is They work together. So they help each other. They would uh, model for each other. They would, you know share models uh, for paintings they would share mm -hmm. um, uh, probably their their working materials so you know it's it's like a like a collective in a way working together mm. um, and I could imagine that working really well I've, I've seen collectives like that before I know that uh, the American comic artist um, Jim Lee moved to Italy where he shared a studio with Giuseppe Camoncoli and some other artists and they just you know just basically shared everything and that, mm. that worked really well mm. and they had a, a beautiful studio in Reggio d'Emilia so I think this this is a really um, like the synergy that develops there is probably quite a booster wow yeah um, sounds like it and of course, I mean, you, you, you see the influences, you see the styles, there's uh, the Kaluda artwork is very Art Deco yeah. uh, oriented. Um, Jeffrey Jones is very, hmm. very strong on the painterly side of things. Um, Barry Windsor Smith tends towards uh, Art Nouveau a little more. Whereas um, Bernie Wrightson, as an illustrator, he's very, um, very ink driven. So he, he's a he's a brilliant inking artist. But they're all, in a way, they all, I think, tend, for, in terms of um, their inspiration, tend towards um, like the 1910s to the 1930s. Mm -hmm. That's what you see a lot in the designs and in the characteristic. Are there any collaborative pieces that they did together? That's a good question. Yeah, I would assume so, but I don't know any out, out of uh, the top of my head. It would be like pretty crazy, like if you think about a piece where all four have worked together on. Uh, yeah, it would be interesting. If you know anything about this, anyone who's watching this, please let us know because oh, yeah. that's write super that down in the comments. Please, please. Um, what about the content? Like the, the text, I didn't start reading, uh, obviously, because we were flipping through the art. But there's a lot of text in here. Um, what about that? It does actually focus on the, the creation of the studio, mm -hmm. um, their collaboration, and some of the you know, behind-the-scenes information of how they worked and how they got together. Yeah. So the studio book is actually about the studio mm -hmm. and not just the artwork in itself. Yeah. yeah. In terms of art, one thing I want to mention is what I really liked about the studio is they don't only show um, all the pretty pieces, but there's a lot of drawings in there and sketches yeah. and preliminary drawings. So you get a good sense of there's a path from the beginning of a piece of work to the finished uh, painting. And that's that's illustrated quite well. That's also something I liked a lot as a, as a young artist because it gave me a sense of it's a process and um, you have to you know start somewhere you do your doodles your thumbnails your sketches mm -hmm. your um, your your studies and then at some point you get to a final to a final piece I always like that it's extremely intricate this is so good yeah Kaluda is a master of either super subtle simple illustrations or incredibly detailed ones mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah Winsor Smith and yeah with uh, Winsor Smith you see a lot of Art Nouveau-ish uh, influences also a lot of um, uh, pre-Raphaelite uh, influences mm -hmm. Dante Gabriel Rossetti you can see um, you can kind of f find uh, Rossetti's style in there and um, one thing I find interesting always is we all look at artists for inspiration, but they too had artists that inspired them and trying to figure out what was that path. It's like a, like an evolution of styles of artistic vision. And it often is based on who were they looking up to? 
or as a friend of mine always says, we're all standing on the shoulders of giants. Mm -hmm. So uh, we are always looking back at artists that are, you know, kind of closer to us, but so were they looking up or uh, looking for, for art by other people. Mm -hmm. Solomon Kane. And look at all these like really beautifully uh, made frames. Yeah. So it's not just the, the image itself, but he loved his his decorative stuff, yeah. uh, intense um, compositions. The purpose of his designs is not always simply aesthetic. Sometimes he will apply a symbolic mannerism in order to draw you into the picture with the express purpose of leaving you with a haunting memory. Barry has a story that goes toward an explanation. Yada yada. <laughs> it's, the content is, is super interesting for anyone who's interested in all these people. That's a good summary. If you don't get like one of those books that are uh, filled only with one of the artist's work. Um, do you know anything about if it's still available somewhere or has it been reprinted? I heard rumors about uh, a potential limited edition reprint oh, yeah. uh, in hardcover form, in a slipcase and everything. Yeah. Um, I have to follow up on it because yeah. um, I'd, I'd love for that to happen. Mm -hmm. Again, if you know anything about that, let us know, please. The book of what? Some Race. The thing is, I have so many books, I can't really, I don't <laughs> read them all the time. So it's been yeah. years since I read this one. Um, and you can't always follow up on everything, mm -hmm. but of course, over time, you, you hear something. Yeah, that's, that's a very beautiful piece. Amazing. Why is this? Is this what is it supposed to no. Universe with a sigma? Is this supposed to be Greek? World? I, I'm afraid, I'm this afraid is, it is. This is supposed to be, they, they actually, they wrote English words with Greek letters. Really? <laughs> As you saw in this other book where they, where they faked German. That's yeah, funny. yeah, what, what the crow it was, right? Yeah. yeah. Oof, boy. <laughs> That's good, okay. I mean, as I said, this is long before the internet, long before Google. Yeah, yeah. Nowadays, everything's easy. You go into Google Translate, but back then you had to find somebody who spoke Greek or knew how to write Greek. And uh... well, you just don't. Bernie Wrightson. Yes. That guy. Makes the dead looking good. Yeah, Wrightson recently uh, made headlines because one of his pieces, one of his ink uh, pieces from oh, the yeah. Frankenstein book yeah, yeah. Uh, was actually sold, sold for mm -hmm. way over a million dollars. So we're now, we're now at a point where comic book artists um, or comic book art actually gets those prices and auctions, yeah. which I find pretty cool. Because, because it's art. Because it's art. <laughs> and this, this particular piece is insane. It's so detailed. Yeah, here's a few from the yeah, Frankenstein, Frankenstein series. Why do we say Frankenstein? We're supposed to say Frankenstein. I know. Because the word is Frankenstein. But we also say Nike and we should say Nike. Nike, actually, if we go Greek. Nike. No, it's okay. Illustration for Frankenstein. And this stuff is from 1977. <laughs> so we're talking old. It's insane. And for, I mean, there's oh, many editions of it, but this is the book. Hmm. Every artist should have this book. Is because it still for sale? Do you know that? Um, it's available in um, in different formats, I think. Uh, I've, I've seen it before. Um, I don't know if this is first print. I, oh, I doubt wow. it. This is wrongly cut. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Introduction by Stephen King. Marvel Illustrated Novel. That's, so, so Marvel is probably still producing this, right? I don't know if they still have the rights to it. Disney, I hope you do. But I'm pretty sure this is, you can kind of still get this. Uh, this one is, everybody knows this one, right? That's just. Actually, the print quality of this book, I kind of, is kind of good because um, the, 
the ink work it's a little pale yeah but it's really sharp so um i think i sadly have to disagree because there's a lot of mismatching in the lines here and uh, it's a soft cover and it's glued and uh, i have issues with that see that oh yeah i know what you mean yeah so you have this not being aligned and being wrongly cut they have this different space but it's probably cheap production i hope there is one that is a better production man this is just insane yes yeah i want to post with that anyway. let's keep going what's this Bad. Wrightson did a lot of horror illustrations uh, yeah. in his early days, so a lot of that stuff is in there. That doesn't look like horror. There's a zombie. So. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> I was just focused on these colors. The zombie and the seven, seven dwarfs. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. yeah, okay. And of course in the 70s there was a lot of uh, erotic illustrations, you know, the, the upcoming of uh, adult magazines that were not Playboy, so mm -hmm. there was a lot mm -hmm. of stuff to be done there. This is, a, again, something I found... I, back then, I still find it kind of uh, cool. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a pencil piece. There's the, I, I assume, uh, ink gouache piece. Mm -hmm. Just so they they used all this space to just show you a step-by-step -step of how this painting came to be, which is unusual, but uh, I really like that idea. Mm. So it's kind of like a making off. Super good. Yeah. I hope it's still available. Maybe even overworked. Maybe it can be published as it is, but maybe it can be put in a I don't know, more modern approach of this, but um, this is an awesome book. Definitely. Drawing stream used to cost $12. How much did you say you put, you, you paid for that? 300 marks. <laughs> nice. So this is a collector, as you uh, just heard. <laughs> yeah, we are crazy people. Amazing book. It's not the most amount of money I ever spent on a book, mm. but uh, it's definitely in the upper mid range yeah well it's uh it's, it's it's certainly one of its kind i um again if you know anything about this being uh, republished please let us know uh it would be great to uh, have something like a comparison to the previous oh, version and um yeah i hope you enjoyed this little trip this uh, first little trip thank you eric thank you bye, -bye. take care <laughs>